Hi, welcome back to the Air of Authority. In today's video, we're gonna show a complete replacement of a bypass humidifier. I showed my dad this video before I posted it. I do that often. I just want him to watch my videos sometimes so that I can get my facts straight. And so I put in some of his commentary along the way for your benefit. I hope you enjoy watching this bypass humidifier installation. Why don't we start with the humidifier and then come back for tools. So you're replacing a bypass with a bypass? Correct. Okay. Yep. So I may have to make the hole a little bit larger. It looks a little smaller than the ones we're going to be installing today, but um, I'll replace this piping, but I'll be able to tap into the supply duct in the same location. The hole for the humidifier is in a pretty good spot. This humidistat, which is what senses the humidity levels in the house and then tells the, the humidifier to turn on and turn off. It's a little closer than I would normally prefer. I think April Air says that these need to be about six inches upstream because air is coming down this trunk through the filter and then through the system to be reheated and cooled and sent to the rest of the house. So this is measuring the humidity levels before it reaches this humidifier and there's a clearance that I think we're within right now that we probably need to move this up or maybe even overhead on the main trunk line. Right for now it's the same for same, but we'll, uh, we'll make a few adjustments here and there. Trying to put the tool back together of everything we're gonna need. So we don't have to make too many trips. It's supposed to have three screws. This is the water supply line. Is there a reason why you want to replace the water line? I see you brought the new one right here, right? Yeah, okay. just treat it like a... Just treat it brand new. This install should be no different than a new install when there is no existing humidifier. Yeah. So, a new install, a new fresh install, we would run a new copper water line, so just run a new copper water line here too. Okay. However, we will not need to install the saddle valve because there is a ball valve right there, which is a little bit better of an option than the saddle valve that comes with it. So okay. we'll use that water valve for the shutoff valve. Yeah, it's a little So this is now the bypass pipe. So it's on the supply deck. Warm air is gonna come off the supply plenum, goes through the bypass pipe to the humidifier where it then pushes that warm air through a wet 
water panel inside the humidifier, and then it's drawn, there's a negative pressure on the back side of that, where it draws it back into the return air. There's a negative pressure in this duct. This is the control wire that will turn on the humidifier and turn it off. It needs to run from the humidistat through the humidifier itself and then also tap into the main controls for the system, the heating and cooling system. I need to run an outdoor sensor for this humidistat so that it doesn't over humidify when the temperature gets really cold if the house has too much humidity in it you'll start to see condensation and moisture building up on the interior windows mm -hmm. and we don't want that so we need this to know the temperature outside but I don't have enough wires in the outdoor unit actually maybe I might one of these two wires wire bundles goes to the thermostat and the other one goes to the outdoor unit the air conditioner in this case and this one is wired up to Y in common so this is my air conditioner wires so I can utilize the extra conductors in this wire and just install my outdoor sensor to the green and yellow wires out there and then I can just tap into these two wires with this wire running up to my humidistat. Oh. And I can just oh, utilize the wires that are already ran to the outside okay. and wire them up to the outdoor unit. Or I'm sorry, the outdoor sensor wired terminals. So that's fortunate. Yeah. Don't there have to run an all new wire outside. It's always helpful when you have extra wires. Since you install these all the time? Do you do you do that on purpose when you're installing? Put extra wiring in there just in I case? I will try to. I always try and run at least six wire, especially for like a two-speed outdoor unit. A conventional single-stage air conditioner, you only need two wires. But we'll usually run six wire outside just so that, you know, kind of to future-proof it for an instance just like this where, hey, I need a couple extra conductors going outside. Mm -hmm. I say conductors, wires. This is a perfect instance of Somebody future-proofing this, making it easier on the next guy. I'm the next guy. Yeah. Actually, did you future-proof it yourself? You might be up here on that thing. Uh, 2014 was 20... the year I was doing maintenance. Oh, okay. Well, looks like I missed. I was not here. Okay. Well, install system 2010. I didn't start installing until 2015. Okay. I ran maintenance calls for one year, which was 2014. So we'll be using nine of the ten wires. You wanna. Have a little bit of the, I'm not sure if you can see that, yeah, you want to have a little bit of the bare copper. And these two I stripped back a little bit long, deeper intentionally, because these are actually going to get looped. They're going to go underneath the lugs on this transformer. So that's why these two wires have a little bit of extra wire exposed, but for most terminals you just need a little bit of copper showing. The insulation just protects it, but I do need the end exposed. So this green wire coming from the thermostat is the wire that tells the fan to run. I am actually going to intercept that call and these wires go up to my humidistat. So I'm going to run the wire with the signal for fan up to my humidistat and then it will come back to the system through this green wire. So it comes from the thermostat through this green wire it's going to go to my humidistat through the yellow wire and then come back through my humidistat with this green wire. So that is how this humidistat has the ability to bring on the blower with that blower activation switch on the humidistat because it intercepts the call for the fan to come on and can either just pass it through in the case of a normal heating cycle or if it realizes that it's too dry inside and we need to run the humidifier, it can then manufacture its own signal for the blower to activate. So it's 
that contraption there? This is the transformer that comes supplied with the humidifier. And its job is to step down the 120 volts coming from the breaker panel. The high voltage side of the system runs all the motors and everything like that. Um, but the control side of the system runs on just low voltage, 24 volts. This is a step down transformer that takes the high voltage and steps it down into low voltage, usable voltage or electricity for the, the control of, in this case, the uh, humidifier. All of these little vol wires right here are for safeties and pressure switches and controls and all that stuff. So all these little wires here use, utilize 24 volts. So there's pieces of equipment in the system that's sole purpose is to take the high voltage electricity and step it down into usable control voltage. Low and here the, the humidifier is going to have its own power supply. That's what he's holding on to right there. A lot of times people will skip this step and try and use the low voltage off of the furnace. But now you're putting all the load on the transformer of the furnace. It's really not a good idea to do it that way. Never give you enough wire to reach the terminals. <laughs> so you always have to have extra wire to extend it. The only available terminal is EAC, but that is only energized. EAC stands for electronic air cleaner, which means it's only energized when the blower is running. Well, I want to be able to turn the blower on, not right. wait for the blower to run. So I gotta tap into line voltage. Oh, there is an extra line voltage terminal, so I Here he's using two a lever bender on quarter inch copper. Look how nice that's going to look. Do you know why the water line needs to be copper? It only needs to be copper if you're running hot water to the humidifier. It has to be a copper water line if it's hot water. Correct. Okay. Um, hot water will make plastic water lines very brittle over time. You don't want anything to bump into that water line and break it, crack it, pinch it. You've got a mess on your hands. So anytime you're running hot water to a, a humidifier, you should be running copper and hot water is much more efficient for these humidifiers. They will use less water if you run hot water to them. This is an evaporative style humidifier. Hot water is just closer to its point of evaporation than cold. So it uses less water to humidify the home if it has hot water ran to it. Does that just open up the water? Mm -hmm. Just a plastic connection. So I don't want to over tighten it. So I wanted to make sure that we didn't have a leak before I got too much further. But everything is looking dry. So you're putting the outdoor sensor for the thermostat? Before I work in here, I'm going to go turn off the breaker for the air conditioner. Because I'm not reaching my hand in there with 240 volts. Yeah. It's off. Is that the actual sensor thing? Mm -hmm. This is a thermistor. It measures the resistance and the temperature directly correlates to a 
specific temperature depending on the resistance. So the resistance goes up and down as the temperature outside does. The humidistat will measure the amount of resistance going through these two wires and it will then know the temperature outside. So it can either turn the humidifier up or down within a certain range so that we don't over humidify the home and see that condensation and moisture on the windows. Good thing it's not hot out today. <laughs> Oh, you're checking the water? Yeah, it's a little more than the Oh, you can adjust it right there? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, cool. That's not quite enough. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. Not wasteful, but just enough to keep the pad wet when it needs to be. Yeah. I'm not clumsy. You're clumsy. <laughs> Have bypass humidifiers always been able to be run when it's not calling for heat, or is that a new um, thing? It's a relatively new control option. Because um, I thought that that was most of the reason why people moved up to the power, right? So that it could run when it um, wasn't heating, or no? Or I just when the so. unit was on? Ever since I've been installing humidifiers for the past nine years, this is how long these new um, controls have been out. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, wondering. like right when I started learning how to do HVAC and install these humidifiers, these were controls were pretty new to the market. Um, so as soon as they came out with these controls, these have always had blower activation. So I believe you're right that before these controls had blower activation, a powered humidifier that doesn't have this bypass pipe had its own fan on the body of the humidifier that was able to just draw, you'd still mount it to the ductwork, but it was able to draw air in through the sides and push it over the humidifier pad so it didn't need the fan in the furnace to move air over its pad. On a powered humidifier, it's still helpful to have the fan then disperse that humid air through the rest of the house, but that wasn't necessary to run air over the pad mm. like a bypass uh, humidifier is. I can't believe he's just remembering to do this detail. That looks so nice. <laughs> Did you work with him on installs and stuff? You must oh, yeah. have, yeah. yeah. When I had him start doing that, I would go out on the install with him, help him do the tear out, the layout of the new stuff, making the new metal, and then mm -hmm. he, I'd usually leave by that time, mm. you know, and he'd yeah, take it finish from everything, you know, mm -hmm. did that for a good part of a year. Mm -hmm. Dry. 